Chapter 34 The Edge of Everything The Enclave Station was located at the outermost periphery of the Luminous Frontier, near the heliosphere of the Kivitar star system. Captain Cantor and Tactical Officer Ruban took the controls, steering the Resonance Cascade into a docking pattern, while Trig and Tenna were pulled aside by Ponico. We must make some preparations for our own safety, Ponico said. Trig, you must lock all three of the Keystone Shards inside one of the vaults in the armory. Vitruvius may not be a friend of the Horde anymore, but that does not make him our immediate ally. Once that is done, the two of you must do meditation. Both of the youngsters groaned and complained about this, as they had wanted to find a window and get a better look at the Enclave. Ponico put his foot down. The Enclave is a place unlike what you have been to before, he said. It is awash in psionic energy, and the people who live there understand the powers of the mind far better than anyone else. Your immature selves will, no doubt, cause a disruption. Immature? Tenna protested, folding her arms. You've had to grow up quickly over the past couple of months, and you have both matured a great deal. Ponico conceded, but you are both still thirteen years old. If you are not prepared, your underdeveloped minds will struggle in the Enclave. Trick and Tenna spent the next three hours in the lounge, sitting on the same cushions from their earlier psionics classes. Under Ponico's watchful eye, the two youngsters tried to clear their minds of what he called unrestrained thoughts. This had the opposite effect. As soon as Ponico turned them loose for the day, Tenna waited until she and Trig were alone in the corridor, then tapped him on the shoulder. You're still not very subtle, Trig. What? Trig held his hands up, knowing that Tenna was about to accuse him of something. You were checking me out the whole time, Tenna said, elbowing him in the ribs. No, I wasn't, Trig responded. I had my eyes closed most of the time we were in there. I swear I wasn't looking at you. Tenna raised an eyebrow, then folded her arms across her chest. Really? Because I can tell you what parts you were staring at, and I can tell you exactly what you were trying to picture in your head. Trigg's jaw fell open. Wait a second. You were reading my mind? Tenna nodded, and then a similar expression of shock came over her face. Wait a second. We're going to a space station full of psionics, and they're all going to know how to read minds, Tenna breathed. Trick gave her a very mischievous smile. You really should have paid attention when Ponico said we need to clear our minds. Then Trick put a hand on Tenna's shoulder, leaned in close, and whispered, so, everyone in the Enclave is going to find out really quick that your mind is, like, totally in the gutter. Tenna shuddered. In this moment where their heads were close together, Trick could just barely read Tenna's mind. He discovered that Tenna made no effort whatsoever to suppress her teenage fantasies. In fact, she was using her own psionic energy to make them even more immersive and lifelike. But in this particular moment, a noisy chorus of Ariha, forgive me, was drowning them out. Above the cacophony, Trick did spot a single daydream that seemed to feature himself. Feeling a little lighthearted, Trig withdrew from Tenna's mind and took a few steps back. Still looking shocked and a little terrified, Tenna put one hand on the lounge door. I'm gonna go meditate for another hour, Tenna said, her face as red as her hair. Finally, the Resonance Cascade arrived at the Shroudwalker Station and started maneuvering to dock. Trig and Tenna ran to find a window, marveling at the Enclave. The station was built into the side of a large asteroid. To Trig, it looked as though a massive city was growing out of the rock, while above it all, a shimmering ribbon of violet energy rippled 
and swirled through space. I thought this was a small station, Trigg said. This place looks bigger than Venka Urbo. A lot bigger, Tenna added. And what is that long, snaky thing over the station? Kara, who was silently passing by, stopped to answer. That, children, is an astral scar, a place where the very fabric of space and time has been torn. The cascade was guided into a port facility, where local authorities made contact with Captain Cantor. We have ten people aboard, Cantor said. Nine Sutherians and one Olenbar. Yes, we were on Sutheria when everything went down. No, we are not affiliated with the SLA or the Vestum government. No, no, we're not affiliated with MSI. Look, sir, the ship's transponder says we're an independent vessel. We've got the CIV prefix in front of our name. CIV Resonance Cascade. I don't know what more you want from me. Ponico gathered everyone else in the CIC. All right, before we extend the docking tubes, I need to check. Is anyone feeling sick right now? Sick? Trigg repeated. We're going to change our atmosphere and air pressure settings to match the station, Ponico explained. Also, once we're docked, we'll be close enough for the Scions to start reading our minds. One person probing your head is usually just an inconvenience, but getting read by dozens of psionics at the same time can be... Well, let's say you're going to get a headache if you're not ready for it. If anyone starts experiencing head pains, tell Anfell. He's got painkiller injections on standby. How are we going to find the guy holding the next keystone shard? Trigg asked. Vitruvius. Suffice to say... Vitruvius already knows we're here for him, Captain Cantor replied. We've been in range of the Enclave's most gifted telepaths for a while. Ponico here was surprised that no one's come down with a headache yet. Tana blushed furiously. Trick could have sworn he saw heat rising from the top of her head. Selborne and Glossom looked at her with expressions of concern. Trick knew what was going on and smiled. Once the cascade was firmly docked to the station, Trigg planted his feet on the floor. The Enclave had minimal artificial gravity, clocking in at just 0.1 Gs, which was weaker than Trigg's homeworld of Edelton, but better than no gravity at all. An Olenbar man dressed in dock workers' coveralls came aboard. He explained that MSI contractors were responsible for all activities at the shipyards, and the crew would have to pass through station security before being allowed into the Enclave. Then he looked over Trigg's shoulder and said, Is that woman all right? Kara was in distress. Trigg looked around to see his mother had hunched over a table and was clutching her head in one hand. It hurts so much, Kara seethed. My skull feels like it's going to split open. Tenna pointed at Kara. I can see about two dozen people all trying to read her mind at once, Tenna said. Trigg squinted. Once Tenna pointed it out, he knew what to look for. Trigg could see it too. Concentrated beams of psionic energy, completely invisible, were shooting through the dockyard and hitting Kara. The Enclave has taken an interest in her, Ponico said. We may be able to use that to our advantage. Anfell, get some painkillers for the poor woman, please, Cantor shouted. He turned to the dock worker. Tell station security that this woman, plus our medic, are going to stay on the Resonance Cascade for medical treatment. If they want to talk to her, they have to negotiate with myself and Ponico first. MSI dock workers guided the rest of the crew to the station security post. One by one, Cantor, Rulon, Ponico, Glossom, Selborne, Bronley, Appia, Trigg, and Tenna stepped through a full-body scanner. Once everyone was on the other side, an MSI medical contractor motioned for the group to approach his kiosk. I'm sorry to hold you up, said the medical contractor, but one of you has just tested positive 
for the nocturnal plague, which is highly transmissible in a psionic environment. I'm afraid you will need to enter quarantine. Trig was confused, and so were the others. But I've been having dreams every night, Trig said. Me too, Tenna added. All right, who here hasn't been dreaming? Cantor said, turning to face the others. No one spoke. Then, the medical contractor pointed at Appia, who recoiled in horror. Don't worry, young lady, he said. It's just 40 hours of quarantine while the psionic damage to your brain is reversed. In fact, you should consider yourself lucky. You clearly don't have psionic abilities, and none of your shipmates have been reading your mind lately, otherwise you would have transmitted the virus to all of them. Let's stop this infection while it has just you. Appia went pale, which for an Olenbar meant her deep blue skin had turned several shades brighter. But, she said, looking around the group in a panic, I can, I can still dream. I, I, I had a dream last night and everything. I can't have the plague. I can't.